That evening, many in the audience stayed on to learn more about an early English feminist, Mary Astle, who wrote a serious proposal to the ladies for the advancement of true and greatest interest in 1694, and some reflections on marriage in 1700. She challenged the position of women in society, wrote in support of education for girls, and argued that marriage should be based on lasting friendship, not fleeting attraction. Professor Ruth Perry from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology gave the talk. She discovered Mary Astle while researching her PhD thesis. It became a lifelong passion. I love that voice. It is so strong, so unequivocal, so confident, so clear. She's a beautiful writer. You know, the satire still works today. I mean, some of those lines are just hilarious. She lived an ascetic life. She never married. She signed her first book, Serious Proposal, by a lover of her sex. She was a feminist. She was a big supporter of women. That's who she was. And that also appealed to me a lot. She was not wealthy. Her father had been a fairly wealthy coal merchant in Newcastle. But when he died, the family fortunes went down pretty fast. And I looked in the coal merchant, it's called the Hostman, the Hostman's Minute Book, and I found debts entered against her mother and her aunt quite late in the 1690s. She must have left there about the time of the Glorious Revolution, I figure, 1688-89, and came to London. I found a, a collection of poetry that she wrote. I found all kinds of fun things, and so precious is, are all these finds that when a, a colleague at another university, following up on a lead that I had given in the biography, found another cache of her books with annotations in the margins and took a Xerox of some of these annotations and sent them to me asking if I recognized the handwriting and I did it was like seeing an old friend it just felt like seeing an old friend I was so glad to see her handwriting again and see more things about her Would you say she was the first feminist? Well you can never quite say that because you never know um, she's the first English feminist that I know about. She predates Mary Wollstonecraft by a hundred years. I mean, you know. And she's very clear in her message. Very clear in her message. Many, many women writers of the 18th century were influenced by her. You know, you can point to direct influence in the case of Lady Mary Wardley Montague, for example, or Sarah Scott, Sarah Chapone whose daughter-in-law was Hester Mulso. She was lampooned by the best male wits at the time. I mean, she made a big splash. Defoe copied her. He actually lifted her idea for a women's college and put it into his essay on projects. There's a long peroration about imbalance of power in marriage in Ma Flanders that comes almost straight from some reflections on marriage. Uh, Swift lampooned her in the Tatler several times. Samuel Johnson in Rasselas has the idea for a women's college, which probably comes from Astell. Samuel Richardson in Sir Charles Grandison talks about a Protestant nunnery, which is how her college was referred to. Is she as known today as she ought to be? No, she is not. But she is in the Norton Anthology of English Literature, which is as close to sainthood as a, an English writer can get, because that's a kind of inclusion in a canon of literature. So she's got a few pages in there from Sears Proposal, I think, in the Norton Anthology. And I think that if you go to 18th century scholarship or a conference on 18th century scholarship, there are quite a number of references to Assel number of papers on her. Some of her books have come out in multiple editions. So, I mean, she's, she's definitely on the map. Chawton House Library attracts many scholars researching a wide range of topics linked to early women's writing.